Today, we take a look at your options when it comes to driveway gate widths. Hey everyone, Jason from Iron Fence Shop. Whether you're considering our Stronghold Iron or Infinity Aluminum driveway gates, chances are you may have some questions on what width gate will work best for your project. The problem is that there is no standard driveway gate width. So today I wanted to go over four questions to ask yourself and show some example scenarios to help you choose what width driveway gate will work best for your project. The first question to ask is how wide is your existing driveway? Now this can vary widely. Grab a tape measure and find out how far the driveway spans from edge to edge. This measurement is especially important for concrete and asphalt driveways, but still something you want to know even if it's a gravel driveway that you can adjust the width of easily. I get a lot of calls where people tell me that they want to price on a driveway gate. However, when I ask about the width of the driveway, they have no idea what the measurement is. They'll just tell me that it's a standard driveway size. Well, driveways can range as narrow as 8 feet and as wide as 30 feet, so there really is no standard driveway size. Before you start gate shopping, be sure you know exactly how wide your driveway is and have that measurement handy. The second question to ask yourself is what will the widest vehicle be that will pass through my gate? Gate needs will vary based on what's driving through the opening. Measure your vehicles from side to side from their widest point. That's typically the side view mirrors. If you only drive a small car or SUV, then the width of the driveway will matter more than the actual width of the vehicle passing through it most likely. However, if you're going to be pulling larger vehicles like dually pickups, RVs, or backing trailers to the opening, you may want to consider a gate a few foot wider than the driveway itself, especially if you'll have to approach that gate at an angle. Also, keep service providers in mind that may need access through your gate. While your personal SUV might fit through a 10 foot wide gate, service providers may need a wider gate to get their trucks through. Service providers can be companies such as landscapers, pool maintenance guys, furniture deliveries, movers, or tree services. Those can often use larger vehicles where you may need a 12 foot or wider gate for them to have access. The third question to ask yourself is what angle will you be able to approach the gate and pass through it? What this question is going to address is if you can pull through the gate straight on or if you'll need to pass through the gate at an angle. This goes for approaching from the road into the property as well as from behind the gate exiting the property, especially if you have a curved driveway or one that widens behind the gate. If you have a longer driveway where you can set the gate back enough to pull in the driveway and go straight through the gate, then the opening width can be closer to that of the driveway's outer measurement. If your gate will be near the driveway edge at the road, or the driveway curves or widens behind the gate, then you'll be pulling through the gate at more of an angle. Having to approach at an angle means you'll want a gate wider than the driveway measurement for more clear distance to pass through. That goes double if you have a longer RV or trailer that has to be backed in. Let's grab a few props here to illustrate what I mean. Let's use these to represent our gate opening. When planning for gate width, how you pass through the gate will make a difference. Let's say our vehicle here is eight foot wide at the mirrors and our gate opening is 10 foot wide. That's one foot of clearance on each side of the car if you pass through the center of the opening. If your gate placement allows you to go straight through on both sides like this, then a tighter gate set up closer to the driveway edge is no problem. However, if gate placement or driveway setup means that vehicles have to pass through at an angle like this, now our tight gate opening may not work, especially with longer items like RVs or trailers that have to be backed in. In this case, we need a wider opening so we can swing the car into the driveway and pass through at that angle. It's not uncommon to have a 12 foot wide driveway and a 16 foot wide gate opening. As anyone that's had to back up an uncooperative trailer can attest, the more room to fit through, the better. Especially with narrower driveways that aren't much wider than what you're backing into the gate. The fourth and final question to ask yourself is how much room you'll have behind the gate. Not only do we want to keep the gate opening in mind for passing through, but also the room behind the gate for that gate to swing back. Consider not only how much the gate leaf will swing back, but what's behind the gate as well. You don't want to lose parking space or be hitting a basketball hoop pole behind your gate. If you have a long driveway of 100 foot or more, this probably won't need to be a big consideration. However, if you have a shorter driveway where the gate will be near the parking area at the end of your driveway, this is key to know especially if you're deciding between a single or double leaf setup in our 10 foot and 12 foot gate widths. You wanna make sure that when the gate swings back, it's gonna leave you enough parking area behind it when open, especially in multi-car households where everything isn't tucked away in the garage. Once you've answered those four questions, that should help you start narrowing down a proper gate width. Now let's take a look at the various gate widths in some example scenarios. To give you some frame of reference, here's a home with what would be considered a single lane driveway. This concrete driveway is 12 foot wide up until it expands at the garage. You'll typically find these longer and narrower driveways in older neighborhoods or homes with larger lots. Here's an example of another home with what would be considered a two car driveway. This driveway is 16 foot wide from side to side. 
you'll typically find these shorter but wider driveways in newer subdivision neighborhoods. We're going to use these two locations to show how the different gate widths look with some example markers and vehicles. Our driveway gates start at 10 foot wide and go up to 20 foot wide in two foot increments. So we stock them in 10 foot, 12 foot, 14 foot, 16 foot, 18 foot, and 20 foot widths depending on the style. The 10 foot and 12 foot wide gates can be a single leaf or a double gate depending on the style. The 14, 16, 18, and 20 foot wide gates only come in a double gate configuration. For example, a 16 foot wide double gate would be made up of two 8 foot halves that open in the middle. For our real world examples we're going to look at, I built some neon orange markers to show the width of the gate on each side. For the vehicles in the photos, we're using a full size GMC pickup that is about 8 foot wide at the mirror edges and a Hyundai Sonata sedan that's about 7.5 feet at the mirror edges. First up is a 10 foot wide driveway gate opening. As you can see, the orange markers are sitting a little inbound of our 12 foot wide example driveway. However, it's still wide enough to fit our full size pickup truck through. If you can pull straight into the driveway and have a vehicle this size or smaller, then a 10 foot gate should be fine. However, if you have a larger vehicle, trailer, or have to pull in an angle from the street, I would suggest stepping up a size or two. Next up is a 12 foot driveway gate opening. Our full size truck can cleanly fit through a 12 foot gate. It might be a little tighter for a dually pickup or RV, but if they can pull in or back through straight, then it should work for them as well. Before we go any further, this is actually a good time to bring up sizing your gate based on your driveway. Whatever width your driveway is, you typically want to go one gate size wider. You don't want to hug the driveway edges, especially on a concrete or asphalt paved driveway with your posts. If we go back to our 12 foot gate opening and our 12 foot driveway example, you can see the gate and posts would clear. However, it's the portion of your post hole diameter underground that comes into play here. You do not want the gate hugging the edges of the driveway so much that you have to dig your post hole diameter for the concrete underneath it. While you will see a 4 inch or 6 inch square driveway gate post above ground, there's a 12 to 18 inch minimum diameter hole filled with concrete around those posts underground. If your posts are hugging the edge of your driveway, you're going to have to dig your post holes partially under the driveway. We want to avoid that if possible. Not only does it make for a more constricted opening, but if the concrete of the footing and the driveway separate over time, that could open a space between them that could lead to cracking or sinking of the driveway there. Our next driveway gate width is 14 feet. Once we start getting to this wide, just about any vehicle should be able to pull through with decent clearance on each side. Going back to the post hole diameter I mentioned, you can see in this image the 14 foot gate would space the post far enough away from each side of the driveway to safely dig your post holes. A 14 foot gate is only a foot wider on each side than a 12 foot gate, so it also doesn't look out of place visually to have the opening wider than the driveway. The next driveway gate width is going to be 16 feet. As you can see, this leaves a healthy amount of room on each side of our truck. It will also be adequate for backing just about anything straight through, including longer trailers and RVs. Just keep that approach angle in mind that we discussed. One other item to note is that a 16 foot gate width also isn't going to look out of place over a 12 foot wide driveway. The posts are only about two foot off each edge of the driveway. If you have a wider vehicle or trailer that comes through the gate every so often, a wider gate over a narrower driveway like this is a good solution and will still look good. The 16 foot gate width is typically our breakover size, meaning that this is the width of gate that can work with both narrower single lane driveways, but also span wider two lane driveways in some cases. For the 16 foot and wider gates, let's shift gears to our other example driveway. While you could use the wider 18 foot and 20 foot wide gates across a narrower driveway as well, this will give a better scale of the opening size with a bigger driveway. Here is a 16 foot opening across that wider 16 foot wide driveway. At 16 foot wide, you can squeeze a full size truck and a standard sedan in for parking. It's a tight fit, but they can be parked next to each other. If you may have traffic passing each other through the gate, I would not go this tight. One driver not paying close attention can mean contact between the vehicles, especially if having to pass through at an angle. As with our 12 foot gate and 12 foot wide driveway example, I would bump up at least a size to 18 foot wide to get those posts away from the edges of the driveway. Our next driveway gate width is our 18 foot. As I mentioned, this would be my selected gate width for a 16 foot wide driveway. It spaces the posts off the edge of the driveway more cleanly and leaves more room to pass through. It's possible you could drive two cars through an 18 foot gate at the same time, so long as they are both coming at the gate straight and paying attention. Our final and largest stock driveway width is 20 feet. This width still pairs nicely with a 16 foot driveway and allows enough room to get two vehicles through if you need to. Even if you aren't pulling two vehicles through at the same time, a wide gate like this can be helpful if you have larger vehicles and trailers that you have to back in or approach the gate at a more severe angle with. A 20 foot double gate made up of two 10 foot leaves is as wide as we go for our stock gates. We have had folks use two of our 12 foot single gates to make a 24 foot wide double gate and custom made wider double gates up to 26 feet. 
there are two reasons why we and many other gate makers typically stop at that 20 to 24 to 26 foot mark. The first reason is that really wide leaves start putting a lot of leverage force on your post. We don't want to build a gate leaf so wide that it overwhelms the mounting post or gate hardware. The second and other reason is shipping. Once you get beyond a 12 foot wide individual gate leaf, the number of carries that want to deal with trying to home deliver a pallet that long falls off pretty rapidly. And those that will do it charge a premium to transport pieces that long. It can also make offloading the gate at your home more difficult without equipment of some kind. Once you pass that 20 to 24 to 26 foot mark for gates, you get into a different type of gate. Rather than swinging on a post, they slide back and forth. However, I'm not going to go into sliding and rolling gates as we don't make and sell them. Sliding and rolling gates are extremely costly to transport, can easily cost three to five times as much as a swing gate, and are not as DIY friendly to work with. Hopefully this helps you in choosing the width of driveway gate that will work best for your project. Be sure to check us out here at ironfenshop.com. Want to know six questions to ask yourself before shopping for a driveway gate? Check out this video we did. If you have any other questions, you can shoot us an email at sales at ironfenshop.com or give us a call at 800-261-2729. We look forward to hearing from you.